I guess she's coming very late today. So you're going to get to listen to me ramble about fursuits. Yay. Yes. Feel free to raise your hand and ask questions at any times. I will try to cover things as uh, thoroughly as possible, but I always forget things. So um, first and foremost, we're going over a couple safety things about fursuits because I don't want people diving in thinking that they are happy-go-lucky little balls of steel and then dying. Dying is not fun. He can tell you. Dying is not fun. But uh, first and foremost, as I can tell you already know, fursuits are extremely hot. Like, extremely hot. You can get heat stroke in negative three degree weather if you're wearing a fursuit. Please keep that in mind and plan accordingly, especially here in Florida, since we don't even get that cold. Um, two, drink fluids, and by that I don't mean chug a couple Coca-Colas and a Rockstar, I mean drink water. Lots and lots and lots of water. If you're sweating, you can drink some Gatorade, but you really do need to take care of yourself in suits because you will get dehydrated very fast. It's always good to have a spotter with you because you don't have the best vision in the world. Spotters also help out if you're in trouble at any time, explain things to people if they're harassing you, um, and that kind of thing. They also make sure you don't trip over children. When you laugh, I have done it. Not only do you fall, you feel horrible. Um, and make sure you take breaks. Like, no, don't plan on, yeah, I'm going to do eight hours at Metrocon in a fursuit. No, you are not. Do it in like one hour intervals. And lastly, children react to fursuits in very different ways. Everything from applauding and running up and grabbing onto you to being terrified of you. Usually the best way to handle a scared child is to act like you are afraid of them. Roll up on the ground, cover your eyes, cover your ears, and just shake. Usually they'll come up to you and tell you that it's okay. Um, and never try picking up a child while in a suit for two reasons. One, you can't really grab anything. I bet you've dropped a hundred water bottles by this point. Yeah. Two, you can't tell where you're grabbing. You don't have the best sight. You can't feel anything. You don't want to be that person that makes a mistake. So, we're going to move on on how to make these things. Yay. Now, I would also like to put a little disclaimer. I did not draw this, and some of these fursuits are not mine at all. I did try leaving most of the watermarks on there and can give you information to those artists and fursuit makers after the panel if you would like. Thank you. Disclaimer over. Um, a lot of the times, I have even gotten to this point where you get halfway through a scene and go, what the hell am I doing? It's easy to get lost in this stuff. So we're going to go all the way back to the basics of it. You got to choose... Uh, you have a lot to choose when you are building and designing your fursuit. Everything from what the heck it's going to look like, to its style, to its size, to what kind of fur you're going to use, to how you want to wear it and what you want to use it for, because that does dictate what you can do with it. Um, apparently my slideshow didn't save the other half of this, so... That are... Nope. So, uh, there are two different kinds of main furs that you can use because you should never use real fur in a fursuit for multitude of reasons, mainly humane reasons, but that's beside the point. Um, in the fake fur category, there's what's called NFT fur, which is usually a four-way stretch, hyper-realistic fur. They used it to make Chewbacca in Star Wars. So it's really awesome fur if you want a realistic effect. It's expensive, about $60 a square foot. Yeah. Ow. To make a fursuit, you usually need five yards. Ow. That's a lot of fur. But it is extremely realistic, and you will get some amazing effects. They are comfortable to wear. It's four-way stretch, so you can make a really nicely fitted suit. And you can actually contact the company and say, I want this fur in periwinkle and eight feet long, and they will actually make it for you. So you can do fully customized furs through them. Again, extremely expensive. Regular faux fur. It's inexpensive. You can usually get it, even decent fur, for about $15 to $20 a yard if you order online. It does come in a lot of colors, however, it's not nearly as realistic. You would have to add things such as airbrushing to it or uh, mixing furs in order to get the desired effect. Usually you can't customize it. It's not as long lasting in that you can't just chuck it in the washing machine most times, but they do wear pretty well. The next thing you have to decide is what style of fursuit you want. And there are even more options than just this. But the standards are toony, semi-toony, semi-realistic. You will sometimes find makers that will do full realistic, but I've had a hard time finding any notable ones. Um, main differences are up there. I assume that most of you can read, and so 
so I will not insult your intelligence by reading it word for word. But, uh... <laughs> Apparently they don't like fursuits. Um, but usually tuning fursuits, the main key difference between the two of them are the eyes on them. Tuning fursuits will have very big cartoon eyes. Semi-realistic will have ones like him where there are domed colored eyes that you see through the tear ducts on. It's him, right? Her? Him. Okay. Then you also have to decide how big you want your fursuit to be. Do you want full, digigrade, plantigrade? Do you want a quad suit? Do you want partials? Do you just want a head? Do you just want the tail and ears? It's a lot to think about. And you always have to think about one, again, what you're using it for, and your comfort. It's fine to walk around in a little pair of ears and tail and, you know, go out and have fun if you're not comfortable having a full head on. I know that's not comfortable. But uh, it's especially good in hot weather to wear less of a fursuit, especially if you don't have access to a nice air conditioned area. But here are two examples of the same animal made in two different ways, and also an example of static versus follow me eyes. The static eyes are going to be the one on the left. The left where they will always look like they're staring at a fixed point ahead of them. Follow me eyes, however, as you can see on the one on the right, look to wherever you're standing. It's an optical illusion. They're very fun, very creepy sometimes, but very fun. Um, and it doesn't mean anything one way or the other, depending on what you want. Statics are really good because when you take a photo, they're actually looking at what you want them to look at in the photo. Follow me eyes, you can stand to the side of them, and they're just staring at you through side eye, even if you want them staring at the person in front of them. So complicated, but follow me are also fun because then you can't have them looking at the camera through odd angles. These are called kimono suits. They are one of my favorite styles of suits. They're from Japan. Uh, they're characterized by very short snouts on them and very large glassy eyes. I think they're adorable. That's my personal opinion. Some people find them very creepy and bug-like. But to each their own. Um, I just wanted to show this because a lot of people don't talk about that this is a style of fursuit you can get. They're usually a little harder to get your hands on, however, yay Jen is here! Um, however, I kind of think they're worth it, but that's me. They typically have only static jaws, meaning that they cannot open their mouth at all, but who cares? Who cares? <laughs> this is Randy Wolf, one of the most, as I can tell, most recognizable, uh, Kimono first series, he also makes his own suit, but sadly you can order one from him only if you live in Japan, which I don't. This is an style of toonie in which they have no eyes. It's literally made to look like their eyes are closed all the time. They are very cute in person. They tend to have excellent vision and ventilation due to having a very wide opening on their face. But at the same time, you have no pupils and some people can find that extremely terrifying. Another uh, example of static versus follow me. Then you have to choose what kind of legs you want. Stompy are very, very large, literally stomp type legs where you kind of can't just normally walk. You have to actually pick your feet up and go. You have plantigrade, grade, which is what us humans have. We bend at the knee and have straight legs. Digi grade is what typical animals have, the curved uh, backwards knee base thing. And drop crotch is exactly what it sounds like. The crotch of your suit is almost at your knees, but it gives the long body effect with very stubby legs. I have seen some adorable uh, corgi fursuits made with this effect. Otters too, because they have long torsos. And this one's a kangaroo, but... Yeah. Um, this is a really great example of the different styles of digigrade you can even have. Just having the word digigrade doesn't mean that they'll all look exactly the same, because different animals have different varying lengths of curve. And then you have to choose your feet. There are so many options when it comes to feet, just in what kind of soles on the shoes you want alone. I think they're all cute. Some are more comfortable to wear, and something you have to keep in mind is those silicone paw pads look really, really realistic and really great. You cannot run, dance, or jump in them. They will rip off the suit. However, they add great traction or great for walking around outside because they keep the fur off the ground. So what do you put on a dancing suit? Smooth bottoms. Smooth bottoms, like like the bottom of an actual shoe. Yeah, the top right, uh, top left corner is a good example of what you can use for that. It's a uh, EVA foam bottom. It does give you a little bit of a slide, which is kind of good for dancing. You could also just put fur on the bottom of them, but that I it looks like walking on ice. But you can do it. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, and the one in the center with the hooves, it's what's called a uh, hoof boot or a digigrade boot. The heel, your actual heel is off the ground through a weight mechanism that allows you to walk normal, but it does give you a hyper-realistic effect. Airbrushing is an amazing thing that you can add to a suit. This is the before and after, obviously, of the same suit with just a little bit of airbrushing in. They're not even trying for a realistic effect, but it does give a very detailed pattern without the struggle of sitting on the ground and trying to cut out each individual piece and then sew them together. I have done that. It is not fun. And very easy to get your pattern skewed to one way or the other. Um, here's another airbrush suit. This actually only has three different colors of fur, uh, which are the ivory fur, a little bit of brown, and a slight darker brown around the ears. Everything else is airbrushed on it. Don't expect your first suit to turn out amazing. This is my first suit. I hate it. <laughs> Honestly, yes, it did turn out better than some, but I really did not like it. And I had to be pushed to actually wear it to a con. Um, but take it and learn from it. I learned a lot by making this suit and messing it up really badly. <laughs> She's laughing because she helped me with it. <laughs> it was a rush job for sure. I made it in one week. We didn't have any padding, so we just put like stuffing, stuffing in, it. in it from like stuffed bear, like stuffed animals and stuff. Obviously, the horns broken on it. The eyes are made out of fleece. Yeah, we had never seen before. The, the tear ducts would just like sink into the snout really far so yeah. that you could see through that. And worst off, the reason it has a scarf on is the neck of the fursuit did not meet the torso of the body. <laughs> there were some problems, definitely. <laughs> but I learned a lot from it to the point this is the second suit I made. Cute. Aww. But it takes trial and error. If you go in trying your hardest but not expecting a perfect suit, you will actually be very happy with what you come out with. I expected a perfect suit because I've been sewing for so long, and so I was extremely disappointed when it didn't turn out right. However, when I went in on this one, I just tried doing my best from what I had learned from it. I hand sewed the, pad, uh, the fur together instead of just gluing it down on something. I took three months to make this one instead of one week, which really helped. <laughs> but even then, this one wasn't perfect. I shaved the fur down too far on the face, and I really messed up around the jaw to where it didn't open properly because I glued over the springs by accident. Again, something you learn. Um, first thing you really, really need though is a reference sheet. This is the Lucid template base made by uh, Waitress aka Cozy Cat Studios. It's an amazing, amazing base. Um, this one was a $52 one, but you got years worth of updates for a different piece of different ears, different everything. And it's really good for people like me who can hardly draw a straight line, let alone a stick figure, let alone one of these. You could also commission it, but man, that's expensive to have it hand drawn. An entire page. You might have, it's, it's, how, you much, might, how much would you charge for How much would I like charge? Uh, maybe like 40 bucks. Honestly, you'd be better off just buying this because it's slightly more than an actual one because they're just so complicated. And literally all you do is you piece the uh, pieces together, erase the lines you don't need, and then color it. And it's done. Uh, and she had so many updates from icon sets to chibis to outfit designers to everything. Um, reference sheet just made off of one of those packs. Even and comes with clothes. Even comes with clothing. <laughs> but either way, moving on from that. Yay, no more of that. Fun. Uh, you can order a lot. You can order a lot of the pieces you need from online, or you can try making them yourself. And by making them yourself, I mean carving out a high-density upholstery foam. When doing that, which is a good way to start because it gives you a nice squishy face, use a turkey knife. Yeah. We actually have them at Joanne's Craft Stores to cut the foam. They work wonderfully. Otherwise, you... electric ones? Yeah. Yeah. You can get a cheap one from Walmart for like 10 bucks. Unfortunately, it prevents your clumsy friends from helping you with the fursuit. Do not lay foam on your lap and try cutting it. Please. You can't. I mean, okay. If you're not clumsy, Ooh, push. There you go. This is a resin base I bought from online and added some foam to. The main reason is you can buy a lot of the resin bases from online for everything from feline, canine, otters, dragons. But you don't really find many bears or many, you know, seahorses, if that's what you want. 
you can just add a little bit of foam to it now that you have a solid base to work off of and go from there because if you mess up you can just pull it all off and start again rather than starting from the beginning. A little handy fact about uh, hot glue, you can actually remove it with rubbing alcohol. Oh. It peels right off. But uh, this is actually going to be a panda once it's all done and furred and everything off of a canine base. It looks a lot better with the nose. <laughs> it really does. But I got a the nose. Dragon. Puff the magic dragon. Um, most fursuits, all you'll need to actually make them in the foam department is half inch foam. Don't go buying the $80 a yard, six inch, whatever. You, this works. Layer it up and glue it down. Oh, you mean for on top of the resin, right? For anything. You can literally make an entire mask out of this. You could. Yeah. How? Would you like glue the sheets together? Um, and then cut it? Not necessarily. You, for the nose, round it out and just tuck the front in and it will actually hold its shape. I can't do it without chopping this to pieces and I kind of need this for other projects. Will a fur head made up of something like that uh, store well? Yes. It will. It'll retain its shape once you get it out of the way. Any, if you actually have a solid foam one, you can put it in a uh, vacuum airbag and squish it completely down and transport it to a con and so long as you give it about an hour to air out after that, it'll go right back to its original shape. But uh, once you have your fun little resin base, Get yourself some masking tape. Once it's like you like, literally cover the entire thing in masking tape, draw your pattern out on it. You'll end up with something that kind of looks like this. Which looks like nothing. Which looks like nothing. It, <laughs> honestly, once you peel it off and cut it up, it looks like a hot mess. Stick it down on your fur or trace it down. It's up to you. Cut your fur out, not with scissors. Scissors, you'll cut your nice, long, uneven fur into a weird straight line. Instead, use a utility knife. Nice sharp one will only cut the backing and leave you your nice long fur. This guy has some markings on him, so there's gonna be a couple pieces currently missing. I have heard different results from people. A lot of people like shaving it once it's on the head. I prefer shaving it before it's on the head just because it gives me a chance to change it if I need to. Plus, for me, shaving something flat is a lot easier than shaving something curved. But, uh. All you have to do after that is literally line your pieces back up. What do you use to shave it? I use a $10 electric razor from Walmart. It clogs up the teeth chip off of it, but after a few months I go back and buy another $10 razor from Walmart. Um, what, <laughs> yeah, what professional fursuit makers tend to use after talking to a few of them is what's called an oyster razor. They're about $180 a piece. However, the teeth on them are made of solid steel and they have a lifetime warranty to where if they ever clog up and die, they send you a new one. So they're kind of worth it. Depends on how many suits you want to make. Yeah, that, that's something if you're making a full-time business of If you're just making one or two, get a cheap razor, kind of put up with shaving it down. It works just as well with the low extra elbow grease. Ears. <laughs> Can I have a lollipop? Go ahead. Um, I've seen, again, my tutorial is on one way to make a fursuit. There are hundreds of ways out there, and each maker has their own method for doing it that they find to be easiest for them. I don't intend for you guys to go out and follow what I'm saying verbatim, piece by piece, and put together a fursuit. I'm hoping that you'll take what I say and go, I think I know how to do that, and go try it yourself. And try your own way in doing it. But uh, the ears I use, Three pieces of the half inch foam layered in different ways. Take a turkey knife to it and put, and put a piece of a plastic canvas from the craft store in the middle of it. It keeps it to where it's still flexible and fun, but will hold up straight up instead of just kind of curving over under the weight of the fur. Um, again, two methods I've seen with this. Either glue it down first and then put fur on it, or put fur on it and then put it down. If you want the ears to bend over, like if it's a dog with floppy ears, what is it? You could put a penny in it? Yeah, if you want like a floppy dog's ears, just glue a penny into the very tips of the ears and they'll hang down and bounce. It's really fun. But this, believe it or not, only costs $16 a yard online. It's a really good fur. It's fairly high quality. You just have to brush it a little more often than you would something that costs $60 a yard. But I don't mind brushing fur. This is more of a shag fur. 
which as you can see has more clumped strands. It's okay for making a fursuit. I like it more so for the color it comes in because no other, none of the other furs in that price range came in this color. But it will give more of a messy look to your suit. If you want something a little more regal looking, you want a smoother fur. Here is it. In the little lollipop they dumped down my box. Nice guy. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Three times was too many. Was that the fur? Yes. Oh my gosh. I mean, I, the odds of him being able to catch Oh! <laughs> I got it to him this time, though. Well, your aim has gotten better this year. <laughs> Where is it? Ah, this is my razor. There are many like it, but this one is mine. <laughs> um, it's in Andis razor. It's okay, it's very loud, and the sad thing is the way you turn it on is to press this down, so when you're holding it, you tend to turn it off by accident. It gets clogged easily, but I mean, I've had this one for almost a year now, and it hasn't died yet, so, not the worst. For utility knives, get one with an interchangeable blade and not a snap-off version. Snap-off ones can actually get caught in the fur and breaks bits of metal into it. And you may not always find all of them. Yeah. I prefer this one. It takes standard straight razors in it. Not to mention, it costs like 4 or $5 and has a lifetime warranty on the body of it. If it ever gets broken, they send you a new one. It's cobalt, right? Yeah, cobalt. cobalt. You can get them at Lowe's. But Probably any hardware store. That's not actually what I'm looking for. Where did you go? I, believe it or not, forgot I had this panel this afternoon rather than later in the weekend, so I didn't sort my box. I know you've been in panels for a long time, but it's not afternoon anymore. Shut up. <laughs> this is a fursuit. I blink. I have oil on my hands from my resin panels still. Uh, this is a fursuit. I blink. It kind of looks like a fish eye currently and not like much. But once you put a backing on it of any sort, even just a solid green. I have a program online that has just basically uh, renderings of human irises. I go through, I alter the color to how I want, I paint whatever pupil I want onto the eye itself, stick it to the back, and it makes a perfectly crystal clear eye. And once follow you, me on. Yeah, follow me on. Um, you won't be able